Yeah. 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 Uh, Booker T. Washington, uh, institution builder. I always encourage people that they can to get uh, Dr. Uh, Tyreen Wright has a book about Booker T. Washington. Uh, he wasn't uh, the accommodationist that a lot of people mm. think he was. Uh, you can you can argue that a lot of this thing was strategy, but Tuskegee's still there, Hampton's still there. Uh, he provided space and is still providing that legacy. So. Uh, B.B. King, my daddy's number one blues man. That's how that made the wall. Although B.B. Although B.B. deserves it. Him and uh, what's her name? Lucille. I think my man got him in the moment right there. Didn't he? Walter Rodney. Walter Rodney, one of the greatest uh, thinkers that we've ever produced out of Guyana. Uh, people know the book How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, and also, uh, you know, he made his mark in Africa, teaching and moving around grounded with my brothers in Jamaica, these kind of things. Unfortunately, died a political death mm -hmm. there in Guyana. Mm -hmm. uh, I always tell people, if you get a chance, find Walter Rodney and listen to him, even before you see him speak. Because you can listen to Walter Rodney for 30 minutes and not realize that that is extemporaneous. I mean, it's how brilliant he is. It sounds like he's just reading out of an encyclopedia. And then finally you realize he's just talking. He's just talking. I mean, this guy is really uh, another level. How Europe underdeveloped Africa, and you know we're doing the library and some things over there, so we're, we're going to see uh, more of those things available for the youth. Queen Amina out of Zaria or Zazu, one of the great House of Queens. Um, she is a, a Calvary leader, and they had a lot of success. Uh, she had a lot of success cordoning off a very huge territory in the north of Nigeria for trading and and all of that. You can still go there. They have the Amina walls, remnants of them all still there in northern Nigeria. Eduardo Manlani, a PhD out of, I think, Northwestern, but he had to go back to Mozambique, start free limo to be ready and organize the fight against the Portuguese. Uh, he was unfortunately killed by a parcel bomb, opened it, blew up and got him. His uh, protege was um, Michelle, who was down there we talked about earlier. So the children, they always know about the traffic light. I always do that. Red means what? Red, go, stop. So they know all about it. Then I let them know that that was a, also a black mind who, who invented that. And fortunately, some of them go on field trips to the fire departments. So I can talk to them about the gas mask and all of that. So it's always good for them to know uh, that uh, a lot of these things they see daily, they have, it's part of their legacy. I know about that conk on the hair, you know. <laughs> We're gonna leave him alone. You know. Curls for the girls. Mm. <laughs> All right, Franz Fanon. Uh, you see, uh, this this whole Caribbean uh, connection is very interesting. You know, we have so much intellectual firepower coming out of the Caribbean. You know, and the I, Caribbean and I West Africa. Yeah, in West Africa, but, yeah, I, but sometimes I think that really has to do with, okay, you're there, you're on these islands, you know, um, you're not getting ready to launch a, a major war against this one or that one, you know, the land is limited, so you do what you can, but you have time to think, because people like Franz Fanon and, and uh, Walter Rodney and Césaire, I mean, it's really just amazing how much, of, you know, um, C.L.R. James and you know, call me long, to Ray, line, you know I mean? long line of thinkers. But anyway, uh, up near the top has got to be Franz Fanon, wretched of the earth, black skin, white mask, mm. a psychiatrist, mm. died at a young age, but uh, left a serious intellectual legacy. John Chalimbwe, he was in, in America as a theologian, he had to come back to Malawi because um, even though he was a theologian, the British in Malawi still hadn't read that Bible that they passed out to everybody, so he had to go back to war with them, uh, pushing them out. So he was the kind of father of that uh, movement there. Seiko Toure, most Ghanaians will know him because he brought Kwame Nkrumah in as his co-president. Uh, when Nkrumah was deposed, I have him here more for his um, resistance to the French. You know, when colonialism was over, the French asked everyone, do you guys want to stay in our French economic, social, orbit and be in the so-called French community and almost all of them said yes but he said no so the French went in and tried to destroy his country you know they're yeah. pouring Carting cement down the pipe, down the pipes yeah. and tearing down all everything but you know I was to say you know we used to say in, in the U.S. party time said yep 
Y'all ain't got to go home, but y'all got to leave here. <laughs> and I think that's what he was telling them. Y'all can be angry, but you still got to go. Tear it up, but we'll refix it. Say for Jure. Amos Cesare, a Nigritude. I don't know if you've heard of Nigritude, which was a West, I mean, which was a uh, French speaking African um, literary movement about French speaking colonies in, in the Caribbean and, and in Africa. Uh, Singor and uh, one from Guadeloupe, they all put that together. Cesare was ahead of that. He's also a well known poet and really one of the intellectual fathers of you know people like Chicante Jup and other ones who were you know young in Paris and around uh, France at the time. Uh, the great Amos Cesare. Samori Touré, I would think, is probably the most effective uh, fighter against in West Africa against the French during the colonial wars, colonial times. Kwame Ture is our own Stokely Carmichael. Like I said, he, he was synonymous with black power when I was a child. Uh, uh, student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, all of that, Howard University. When he came to Africa, he changed his name, Kwame Ture, and started All African People's Revolutionary Party. He was also married to Mary Kiba for a while. Uh, back here, our great thinkers, scholars, teachers, John Henry Clark, Yosef Benyakinen, available to all of us all of the time. I can't say how much they've produced, but you know, you all probably know a lot of it. Everyone wants to know where is Mandela? And I say she is right here. <laughs> Good job. You know, we've got our sister okay. Winnie Mandela. Uh, other people might not give her the love, but we will. We will. Yes, and you got we'll it. Give it to her first because, you know, I we mean, appreciate she was it. in there fighting, struggling, going through everything she went through, and at the end, you know, it's almost like they tried to you know, bury her name and say, no, we're not, we don't do that. You know, we stick with the one that stuck with us. Now, people ask me about Nelson. I tell them I have a lot of wall on the other side. And uh, I talked to Winnie. She'll tell me when to get that yeah. painting started. Yeah, she told me it's not time yet. She told me it's not time she told yet. You, okay, well, yeah, we, we had a I'll spiritual connection. You. You know, yeah, she she's told like, you you told me. Yeah. we'll get it. And then Francis Chris Welsing. Right? For those of you all that don't understand the mechanics of white supremacy, what it's about. And uh, she was disabusing us of this idea that this is just going to be a kumbaya once we explain, you know, how nice we are and how clean and healthy and this. The other people are going to say, well, if we had have known that, we'd have let you all in. That's not how it works. <laughs> this is a survival thing on the part of uh, Europeans. Now, I also have her here. I don't know how many of you all remember. Uh, you know, there was a guy named Shockley who was supposed to be this scholar. He was a tech guy, actually, and he was the one who was really pushing this whole thing on black genetic inferiority, yeah. intellectual inferiority. And got a lot of currency, a lot of mileage. He was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tony Brown, remember Tony Brown's journal? Yeah, yeah. He brought Shockley on the debate, Francis Cress Wilson. <laughs> yeah, you talk about a slaughter. Did you see that? I saw that. I mean, even I, I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she just wore him out, and then yeah. and we didn't hear nothing else about him. <laughs> Some people did, but for us, especially those who could get the video and make sure everybody saw it, you know, they, she closed the book on that. There was only one Francis. And she, so she's, uh, she's there and explaining to us what we got to do next. So that's the African Ancestor Wall. Yes, yes, yeah. excellent, Jerry, yeah. excellent, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to mosey through some of the, the uh, grass over here because I need to show you the... The African Ancestral Wall family. 